I've come up onto the top of the roaches now and uh, this sketch I'm going to do a general view looking across the front of the cliff face. It's very windy up here and it's very cold uh, and that's quite a good thing because it means I'm going to work quickly because I want to get the thing done and move on. Um, once again I'm going to keep things as simple as possible for as long as possible before drawing in the finer rocky details. Most important thing is to get this, get the slope in. There you go, let's, and there's also a very nice, a nice stone wall which wheedles its way around there. Very often when conditions are as windy as this and as cold as this and you have to work quickly, that's not a bad thing. When you're forced to work quickly, it means you're more selective. You pick out the things that interest you and you ignore the things that don't interest you. One of the things you have to look out for when you're doing a rock face like this is to be wary of creating faces, giving the rocks noses and eyes. It's easy to do. Just working my way along there, just getting the, the shape of the outcropping in after me. Finally, I'm just going to draw these four ground rocks in. If I can do it before the wind. Whips the sketchbook away. These again are very important because it gives us a, a sense of place. It shows us where we're looking at the rocks from. There we go, just sort of get those and then get the general shape in. The other thing that I'm drawing here, there's a, uh, there's a line of trees which I'm going to include on the sketch, but just to remind me so that I don't get confused later on, I am actually going to write a little note here which just says trees. Well, I think that's going to do me for now. I've got enough information there to work with. Uh, I'm going to move on before I get blown off this cliff face. The roaches at their highest point reach 1500 feet. And boy, did it feel like it out in that wind. Now you can see I've developed my outdoor sketch into a studio sketch. One of the things I was particularly keen on putting right was the fact that the original outdoor sketch appears to have a face in it. Now always be careful when doing natural features such as rocks, trees as well up to a certain extent, but always be careful not to give them faces. It can happen so easily. So when I was producing the studio sketch it was particularly important to me to try and avoid giving it any facial features whatsoever. For this painting I want to take a little bit of a risk and do something a little bit different with it. Uh, with the other painting I carefully planned it out on the watercolour paper. Uh, in this instance I'm going to go straight in there without any pre-planning whatsoever. On top of which I want to change the mood considerably. I want to make it a sunset and I'm going to put some snow on the ground and maybe introduce a few sheep. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to begin by mixing a blue-grey mix from the French Ultramarine and the Burnt Umber. And I'm going to go straight in there and paint the rocks.
Now, if you're going to do this, you really have got to be cool about it and not worry about things being accurate. It's about creating a mood. That's what this particular painting is going to be about. Because there's going to be snow on the ground, leave plenty of highlights. That'll represent the snow. It doesn't matter about getting the same mix all the time. In fact, varying it is probably going to be good for it. Don't forget the foreground. Again, there's going to be snow on the ground, so be plenty of gaps, plenty of highlights there. Just get the general shape of things. Keep telling yourself, near enough is good enough. That's the footpath there. While that's still wet, I'm going to mix up some seriously red sky. I'm mixing this from cadmium red. I'm going to go straight in there with the red. And while it's still damp, I'm going to add to it French ultramarine. So I should create a nice, moody, sunsetty sky. This is the theory anyway. Let's see. Hopefully this is what's going to happen. That's the cadmium red and I'm painting this onto a dry surface so I am having to work quite quickly here so that I don't get hard edges in places that it's inappropriate. There's the cadmium red, let's draw it straight across there. Soften it off slightly there, just to give myself a little bit of breathing space. I'm going to come in there in a minute with the French ultramarine. Do me a little bit more, nice and rich. Now here comes the French ultramarine. I'm going to chop and change around a little bit, a bit more of the cadmium red in there, because I want to give the impression of some clouds in the sky. The fun part about this is that I have absolutely no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm just using a couple of colours that I think are going to mix together quite well and create a nice, interesting mood. Beyond that, I have absolutely no idea. Don't forget the trees. There's a line of trees down here, so I'm going to drop those in there while it's still relatively damp. Wow, you just never know how a sky is going to fall. I'm reasonably pleased with that. I've got to leave that just to dry for a few minutes though.